this video I'll be reviewing the 2020 Norco Fluid FS2. This bike retails for $2,800 and comes with the SRAM SX Eagle 12 speed. Along with that, this bike comes with 130 millimeter travel in the front with your RockShox Recon RL and 120 in the back with the RockShox Deluxe Select. If you want to know any of the other specs, there's a link in the description where you can look at all of them. But let's talk about what is the most distinct feature of this bike. And that of course is the 29 inch wheels. With 2.6s on both the front and the back, it's almost a plus bike, but not quite as the distinction is 2.8. But whether it is a plus bike or not, these tires feel huge. I remember the first time Bo rode this bike, he said that the tires reminded him of riding a dirt bike. And with bigger tires, you get the advantage of being able to roll over a lot of different things that skinnier tires would have trouble going over. And to actually show you how big a 29 inch wheel is, I did a size comparison between this bike, my bike, which is a 27 and a half, and my sister's bike, which is 26. So as you can tell, there is a big difference in the sizes, but that doesn't begin to tell the difference of feeling on the trail. It's truly amazing the amount of technical roots and rocks that you can roll over with this bike and not even feel it. This bike allows you to be a lot less worried about every single tiny root because chances are you won't even feel it and it's not a big deal if you do hit it. And that's opposed to the 27 and a half and especially the 26, where if you hit the root a wrong way, you're going over the bars. So if you do consider yourself maybe more of a sloppy rider or you just don't like that aspect of biking, I highly recommend wide 29ers. And with the wheels being bigger, naturally everything else becomes bigger. My dad and I were talking about it and I don't think we've seen a bike that's actually been bigger on the trails. So if you're willing to give up some of that finesse for more of a roll over stuff, going fast kind of a ride, this is definitely the bike for you. And there's definitely something to be said about the rolling speed of 29ers. It takes a while longer to get going as compared to a 27 and a half, but once you start going, you don't stop. It seems like you're rolling forever and you have a lot of momentum, AKA inertia. But now let's talk about a few of the things that I didn't like about this bike. Starting off, I wanna talk about shifting. This bike isn't the highest end in its line, so naturally some of the components aren't the best that they can be, which includes the shifter. As you can see here, you can only shift one up and it does get annoying, let's say, as you can see here, as I'm going to hit a jump, I'm rapidly clicking it, whereas on my bike, I can click and grab two gears immediately. So that's a little bit of a nitpicky thing, but I definitely did notice that. And probably what is the biggest take back of this bike is that it is heavy. And when I say heavy, I mean it. Well, maybe not that heavy, but it is a pretty heavy bike. So to determine how much weight it was, I went and did what everybody does and grabbed their bathroom scale, weighed myself, I was 153.6, then I weighed myself with the bike, subtracted the two, and I got 37.4, which is a good eight pounds heavier than the standard mountain bike. And that's excluding your hydro pack, your spare tubes, your parts, your tools, all that stuff. So if you're not careful, this bike can get pretty heavy pretty fast. And since this is my dad's bike and he's been riding it the whole season, I thought I'd let him say a few things. So yes, this is my new bike and I really do like it. My old bike was an excellent quality bike, but it was too small. I had ordered a large frame giant trance with 27 and a half inch tires, but when it was delayed, I went into the shop and saw this one there. I always liked the paint job, so I thought I'd take it for a ride. I liked it and bought it. I always knew I wanted a bike with fatter tires, but I didn't realize how important the larger diameter is as well. This bike really helps me gain confidence and lets me roll over all kinds of stuff that I would have been nervous before. I'm glad I bought this bike. And I have to add a huge disclaimer that this is a review of the 29 inch model. You can also get for a medium size 27 and a half. You can't get large in 27 and a half. That's just how the brands do it now. But now let's talk about who this bike is for. And really this bike is for anybody who doesn't really like the aspect of riding where you're always looking at the route and you have to get the right line or else you might wipe out. This is really more of a safe man's bike. You're less prone to injuries with this bike, I'd say, and you can really get going fast. So if that's you, I definitely recommend this bike. So now let's rate the bike. Honestly, I think I'd give it about an eight out of 10 because it is a solid bike. You get your money's worth, but there are a few glaring issues with it, but nothing that doesn't make it worth the purchase. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's my review on the 2020 Norco Fluid. I hope you did enjoy. If you did like this video, please consider subscribing. All you have to do is click right down there. As you can see here, a large number of people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So if you did subscribe, it would mean a lot. But that's the end of the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.